gosh, I'm so excited. My anchor finally showed up from my kayak. I can't believe it. This thing is awesome. Welcome to Angler's Bray. Here you'll find low budget tips, tricks, reviews, do it yourself projects, and other shenanigans, all relating to kayaking, fishing, and sailing. Do you really need an anchor on a kayak? That depends on two things. Number one, it depends on you personally, if you really want one or if you don't. Number two, it depends, your state may require it as a law. So get with your state regulations and determine whether or not you actually have to have one or not. And from there, just determine what you wanna do. If you've come to the conclusion that you need to put an anchor on the kayak, there's two basic ways of doing it. You can either use an anchor trolley, like this one, or you can just tie it straight to the kayak. Word of warning, if you tie anything straight to the kayak, do not ever, ever in any current or wind tie the anchor to the side of the boat, to anything on the side of the boat. It's going to hurt you in the long run. What you want to do is you want to take it either out the front or the back of the vessel, never out the side of the boat. The reason for that is if this is under duress, the side of the boat is going to capture a lot more force than the front or the back of the boat. When you tie to the front of the back of the boat, I recommend to go through either the handle in the front or the handle in the back or some kind of loop or pad eye or something in the front or the back. You should always bring your line back to where you are so that you can disconnect if you need to in an emergency situation. With that said, what kind of anchor do you need to get? There's a bunch of different kinds of anchors out there. It really doesn't matter what kind of anchor you get. You can get round anchors, claw anchors, short stubby anchors. You can get chain. You can use dumbbells. I do. There's a plethora of anchors out there, anchor types that you can go from. It all depends on where you're throwing the anchor and how bad a bite you need to get, depending on the current and those situations. So I would look into what the purpose of each one of those anchors is for before you actually purchase one. I carry my anchor and my anchor's gear, per se, in the back of my boat. This way, it's always there, and I can get to it if I need to. I gotta admit, sometimes I'll trick trips and I'll leave the anchor in there because I never use it. Other times, I have to keep it up front with me because I use it every time I stop. Again, I use a dumbbell. Couple of reasons. Number one, I think I paid 50 cents for this one at a thrift store. They're cheap. If you have to pay for one, they're only like three or four bucks at a Walmart brand new. I use a five pound. You can use whatever size you think that you might need. From there, I have a 3 16 cord that I tie to. This is a cheap cord. I think I paid a dollar fifty for 150 feet of it. I got it at Walmart. I use purple because that's what I picked up. From there, I have a buoy. I'll explain why I need the buoy later, but for now, you can have two types of buoys. Like this one, slides on a rope, or you can have the type that have a hook on either end and it fixes to the line. I use a slide. The reason I use a slide is because when you're anchored, your line goes underwater. Usually, especially if there's any kind of stress or duress on it, it goes underwater. And I have hung a lot of lures up on that line, and it's a pain to get to, especially when you have to pull yourself to that part of the line if it's out any, any type of distance at all. The other thing is when this goes out, this buoy goes out, and it literally just crawls away from the boat on its own. And what it'll do is it causes this line to float. Now, number one, I can see it, so I know where my lure is, you know, according to where this is at. And the second thing it does is it changes the angle of my anchor line going to my anchor, anchor going to my anchor, so that it don't catch as many lures in front. I know I can go a little bit closer without having to worry about it being out like this. The last thing I have is a clip at the end. I use a clip, you don't have to. You just need something that your buoy, if you use a sliding buoy, doesn't slide off of. As I said before, you can go through the front of your boat or through the back of your boat, but don't ever go through the side of your boat. Once you bring it to you, you can either just clip it to a pad eye where you can get to it, or you can tie it off in some fashion, such as a cleat or something like that. Either way you do it, 
it has to be able to be disconnected quickly. You can't just put this on there and tie it in a knot that it takes you five minutes to untie. Trust me, if you're under some kind of duress, you need to be able to take control of that situation as quickly as possible. And the only way to do that is to be able to get rid of your anchor as quickly as possible. Okay, let's talk anchor trolley. Do you need an anchor trolley? No. Is it easier to use an anchor trolley? Undoubtedly, yes. If you're at anchor and the current shifts or the wind shifts, because we all know that happens, it may be easier for you to move the anchor from the front of the back of the boat with an anchor trolley than having to walk to the front of the boat, undo it and run it, walk to the back of the boat and put it back in, or even worse than that, having to go ashore, move your anchor and then come back and then go back to the fish that you hope are still there. Needless to say, this is the major convenience of an anchor trolley. There are more reasons and I'll go over a few, but that's the main contributor. An anchor trolley has four basic parts. You have the pad eye, something that attaches that allows your line to go through via pulley or clip or otherwise. Then you have your line and then you have some kind of a center ring attached that allows you to go through or attach to. So the purpose of an anchor trolley is to move your anchor from the front of the boat to the back of the boat. There's basically two ways to rig to an anchor trolley. The first way is to clip directly to the ring. The second way is to run your clip through the ring and to clip it close to you here. I recommend the second one. The main reason is if your anchor trolley is all the way to the front of your boat, like that, you can't, you have to bring it all the way back to you to unclip it. Took a few seconds. However, if your anchor trolley is all the way to the front of the boat and you have your clip here, all you have to do is unclip it and it'll go right out your anchor ring and you, your trolley ring and you don't have to worry about it. One of the major downfalls of clipping it right to the ring is the duress that is put on the boat pulls the anchor further away from you. Not only is it pulling it further out this way, but because the anchor is low, it's pulling you further out this way. So in order to get to the ring, you have to bend over, way over, you have to lean way over to get to it. And what that does is it lifts the other side of your boat up. And when your other side of your boat lifts up, this side of your boat goes down. And now you're kind of in a threatening situation to flip. And well, the last thing we want to do is go in the drink. Why do you think you need to be able to unclip or untie your anchor line? Number one reason, when you're fighting any kind of a current or anything that is going adjacent to your kayak, being able to unclip or undo your anchor line allows you to float naturally with whatever duress is coming at you. Thereby, you can reposition your boat and come back into your anchor and re-anchor. Another really good reason that you want to be able to unclip from your boat is a fish. If you're on a good sized fish, and it doesn't have to be very big to pull it. I've had 18 inch fish pull my kayak around. If you're on a fish, a good strong fish, and it's pulling you, the last thing you want to do is to fight it while at anchor. The reason for that is fish turn your body. And what happens is when you turn, if your kayak's facing this way and you're fighting the fish this way and that fish comes around this way, your body turns around this way. And when you start putting torque on your frame to come back this way, the kayak goes this way. And what happens is you end up putting your anchor line under your boat. So what happens is the easiest way to deal with that is when the fish starts to move, you unclip your ring, unclip so it run off, and then you can turn the kayak into fighting your fish. So now your kayak is in front of you fighting your fish instead of the side of you, which will tip you over. Let's talk about stakeout poles. Again, you don't really need one, but man, are they handy. I usually only use a stakeout pole in two to three foot of water or less. The reason for that is I don't want to put out three foot of anchor line just to, to stop myself in shallow water. If I'm in that shallow water here where I am, the water's usually not moving very, it's not a lot of current. If it is a lot of current, then I'll put out my anchor. But if I'm not in a lot of current and I want to stay still, I, I use a stakeout pole. 
The other reason I like a stakeout pole is I do a lot of sight fishing, meaning I stand up in my kayak and I look for fish. And when I see one, I want to be able to stop the boat right away because I don't want to come too close to them because redfish is usually what I sight fish for. And those things are spook real easy. So what I do is I use this and about a foot or two of water as a push pole. And, it, and I push myself along instead of using my paddle. That way, if I do find a fish or see a fish, I can take my stick out pole, run it down, and I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm tied in. How I have mine rigged is from the handle, again, this is a three quarter inch solid fiberglass pole, <clears throat> very stable. Uh, I don't think I'd be able to break it to be honest. If I would break it, it would hurt. How I have it rigged is in the handle, I have one bungee cord. This bungee cord, I drilled two holes through the bungee like a horseshoe, and I tied two stopper knots on it to stop it from coming out. The reason for that is the bungee cord gives me a lot, a lot more absorption than just tying it to the stakeout pole. From there, I have a water bowline tied in onto the bungee cord. I have about, I don't know, I'd say five foot with a pull noodle as again you're going to need something to keep your line floated if you have to unclip it and then of course another water bowling tied in to a clip now i do something different with my pole than i do with my anchor my stakeout pole i clip directly to my ring the reason for that is again i don't use my stakeout pole if there's a lot of current or a lot of wind i use an anchor this way, it allows me to keep the ring here and be able to utilize the rest of that pole to use as a push pole on either side. That's the first reason. The second reason is if I have to fight a fish or anything, the stakeout pole keeps my line up out of the water. So it's easy to get to. I don't have to lean to get to it. And I can still move back and I can still move my anchor trolley to the back or to the front if I want to move my boat and I'm in a shallow position with no wind or current or anything in order to fish on the bottom or something like that in a channel or per se or something like that. So let's go over how to put an anchor trolley together real quick. I don't want to do an install video or anything like that but just go over what some of the parts are so you can have a better understanding of it. Again, your anchor trolley has four parts, pad eyes, some kind of device for it to go, the line to go through, and then the line itself and the ring that's on the line. You're going to have, basically every anchor trolley has four pad eyes, one in the back, one in the front, and then two intermediate pad eyes to guide. Mine has six. I have one here, in the back I have an intermediate, then I have a secondary and a third intermediate close to me, and then I have another intermediate to the bow, and then the pad eye in the bow. Now, the reason I do that is because the hull of this boat has a tendency, and you can see it here, this bottom line rides up a lot. So I, to stop that, I put these intermediates in here so that it, this particular part of the line didn't come up over my handle. All it's doing is stopping it from going over my handle. You can use any kind of pad eye you want. You can use any kind of line that fits through the pad eye without restriction. You can use any kind of a clip or a pulley that allows the line to go naturally through it. Some high-end setups have the pulley integrated within the pad eyes. These are really nice. These same types have a flat pad eye that allow the line to go through, but it doesn't protrude to where you can get caught on anything such as a trailer or any kind of storage area. Some systems have what we call a locking system on it, which allows you to lock the line in place so that the any kind of current or drag or anything like that doesn't pull you or your boat out of position. Again, do you need an anchor? That depends on where you are and what you want. Do you need an anchor trolley? No, but it really is convenient. Do you need a stakeout pole? No. Again, very convenient. I hope you learned something about anchors or about anchoring or about anchor trolleys or something like that. If you have any questions, comment below. I'll get to them as soon as I can, no problem. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button, help me out. If you 
learned anything from it at all. Subscribe. I do these kind of things all the time and I love to share this information.